Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is the start of Module 2 where we're talking about mutations. And in this first lecture, we're going to talk specifically about errors in DNA replication. We'll first introduce why we care so much about mutations, and then we'll talk about how mutations arise, and about the events that can happen that determine whether a mistake by DNA polymerase actually turns into a mutation. So the basic definition is that a mutation is a change in DNA sequence. And we can clarify that by describing some constraints on this. First, the DNA sequence has to have become different, different than the normal standard functional DNA sequence for that organism, usually different than the sequence that was there before. If we consider it as if it was text, because this is very much an informational concept, we could say that, for instance, if the word tire was the normal word, the normal sequence, then any of these changes of replacing the I with a Y, which makes a word that has the same meaning, replacing it with an O, makes a word that has a different meaning, replacing it with an X, well, that's not really a word at all, but it's still a, funk, a string of text. Which brings me to the second point, that the change must produce something that's still structurally normal DNA. So this is structurally normal text because it's just got the normal letters. But these are not structurally normal text. Question marks don't belong in the middle of the words, nor do snowflakes. This is a broken character, equivalent to a defective piece of type, and a symbol from another language. So none of these are mutations. And part of the reason that they're not considered mutations is that a mutation must be inherited by daughter DNA molecules. If You have to be able to pass it on. Um, and these structures are not things that DNA polymerase would recognize, and so they can't be inherited. A mutant, it's the other related term, a mutant is an individual that has a mutation. So the mutation is the change, the mutant is the individual or the cell with the change. Now, there's lots of reasons to care about mutations. Um, mutations reduce fitness. They cause harm to individuals and they cause extinction of species. They cause cancer. We'll talk a lot about cancer and how mutations are the cause of cancer in Module 4. Mutations make us worry a lot. We'd like to understand mutations better so we know what to worry about. On the other hand, in an evolutionary framework, mutations generate the heritable variation that's the raw material of evolution. If we didn't have mutations, there'd be no natural selection, and evolution wouldn't have happened. Finally, accumulated mutations tell us how evolution happens. They provide a kind of historical record, and we'll talk about this in a later lecture. Now, here's a diagram showing how mutations arise in DNA replication. So here's DNA polymerase in the process of replicating a template strand, making a new strand. And it should put in a C at this position, opposite the G, but instead it puts in a T. It makes a mistake. And this creates a structure that we call a mismatch. However, a mismatch is not a mutation by the definition that we just went over. Now, when this DNA is replicated again, the next cell division, each of its two strands serves as a template for the synthesis of a new strand. Now I've colored the new strands green. And what you see is that one of these double-stranded DNAs, this one, 
contains a changed base pair. This is a mutation. The other daughter DNA molecule, double-stranded DNA, contains normal sequence DNA. Now, most mutations start out as mismatches, but most mismatches don't become mutations. In fact, less than 1% of mismatches become the kind of mutations that I just showed you. And that's because of a function carried by DNA polymerase called proofreading. Proofreading is a term, of course, from English publications, from text, and it means in the context of DNA replication, it means exactly the same thing that it means in the context of um, checking the quality of type of written material. So here's, again, here's our DNA polymerase, and it's made a mistake. It's created a mismatch. Now, some in the previous slide, I showed DNA polymerase just chugging on ahead. But in fact, DNA polymerase doesn't do that. Most of the time, when DNA polymerase puts in a base, it sort of feels behind it and checks to see how well that base fits. And if that base doesn't form a proper base pair with the template strand, DNA polymerase backs up. And this brings into position a part of the DNA that's able to cut out the defective, the mismatched base, which then allows DNA polymerase to proceed synthesizing, inserting a correct base, and then continuing with the synthesis of the DNA. So in the absence of proofreading, the error rate is about 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 6. So that's mismatches per base pair. That's about 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 100,000 base pairs is the wrong base. Now that's actually an extraordinarily accurate replication rate for a molecule to be able to accomplish, but it's not good enough. With proofreading, the error rate goes down to approximately 10 to the minus 8, which is an astonishingly high fidelity rate. But it's still not good enough because our genome is so big. And the cell solves that by bringing in a completely new independent repair system on top of proofreading, and that repair system is called mismatch repair. It does exactly what you, its name suggests it would do. So here's our DNA molecule containing a mismatch. This time DNA polymerase didn't notice it, didn't proofread it and correct it. It's been left behind. Now, so far I've drawn DNA with mismatches as if it was structurally normal. But in fact, the inability to form a base pair here creates a deformation in the backbone of the DNA. I'm just going to draw it as a little kind of bump. And mismatch repair enzymes travel along the DNA, feeling the shape of the DNA. And when they encounter a place where the shape of the DNA is wrong, they initiate a repair process. And what they do is they cut out the damaged section, the wrong base, and some bases around it. And then they leave the DNA. This creates a gap in the DNA where a repair polymerase, a special DNA polymerase called a repair polymerase, can come in and fill in the gap using the template strand to insert the correct base. And then the DNA repair polymerase leaves the DNA and we've restored functional DNA. So the efficacy of mismatch repair is such that it 
correct about 90% of what proofreading overlooks. So the final error rate is approximately 10 to the minus 9th errors per base pair, which is a extraordinary fidelity for a molecule or a molecular complex to achieve, far better than we can do ourselves. So here's a question. If DNA polymerase inserts a wrong base that isn't corrected, it isn't corrected by proofreading, it isn't corrected by mismatch repair, and then the DNA gets replicated again when the cell next divides, can the mistake still be corrected? And the answer is no, the mistake can't be corrected. Because the changed DNA is now structurally normal, there's no process in the cell that can detect that it's changed from what it used to be. It's now a mutation. And to help you, it might help you to think about that, to remember the image that we looked at in a previous slide, where we have, after the second round of DNA replication, we have one DNA double helix where we have correct base pairing, but the base has changed, and we have the other double helix where the base is still normal. So, what have we done? We talked about why we care about mutations, and then we talked about how mutations arise mainly because of mistakes made by DNA polymerase. We'll also talk about later about how mutations can arise due to the creation of damaged DNA, DNA that's not structurally normal. So when DNA polymerase creates mutations, the first step is that the polymerase puts the wrong base pair in when it's replicating the DNA. That, however, is followed normally by two correction steps. First, a proofreading step, and then a mismatch repair step, which between them reduce the rate of mistakes in DNA replication by more than a factor of a thousand. Coming up next, we're going to talk about more about mutation rates, and we're going to talk about how natural gen genetic variation is the product of mutation rates and the action of natural selection on the mutations that are created. I hope to see you there.